Eric Darling here with Darling Data. Uh, wearing a slightly different Adidas shirt than my normal uh, three stripe. I got I got the the trefoil. I believe it's it's called uh, design going today. Uh, feeling pretty feel pr pretty spiffy. Uh, to be honest with you, very spiffy. And uh, today's video, uh, I want to give kudos to um, uh, a couple of people in the Siebel server community who. Um, uh, have really helped me a lot, um, directly and indirectly, uh, in, in my SQL Server learning over the years. Uh, of course, that's uh, Paul White and Aaron Bertrand, um, you know, prolific answerers on the stack sites, prolific bloggers, um, at one point, pro pro prolific presenters. Uh, but uh, uh, the way that I want to do it is because I've been talking a lot about isolation levels, uh, and even in one of my isolation levels videos, I, I talk about... Um, uh, you know, the problems that you run into with read committed or uh, no lock hints, um, which are synonyms for each other. Uh, and uh, one of the things that I talked about in there, uh, which I didn't uh, have a demo for at the time, was um, uh, when you have a query that hits an error because of uh, read uncommitted no lock uh, because of data movement. So uh, I have a demo from Paul White that shows that. And then I have a, a very cool demo uh, that shows um, missing and skipped and double counted rows because of no lock hints uh, in tables. But before we get into that stuff, we of course need to talk about how you can buy me more new Adidas t-shirts. Uh, for four bucks a month, you can sign up and become a member of this channel and contribute to my Adidas t-shirt fund. Um, uh, I can't promise that they're all going to have different logo designs on them, but they will all be black and white. So at least we'll have some consistency there. And me and my friend Bats will continue to match. So if you if you put, like, I wonder, I think if I just put this close enough to the camera and I just sort of superimpose his face on mine, it's, it's probably a close enough match, at least as far as I can tell. Uh, if, if you don't want to contribute to my Adidas t-shirt fund, if you're just feeling especially scroogey and stingy at this time of the holiday season, uh, you can like, you can comment, you can subscribe, and um, while I won't get any new t-shirts from that, I will live with the immense uh, gratification that comes from numbers on a screen going up when I hit refresh. So there's that. Uh, if you need help with SQL Server, perhaps you're saving that $4 a month because you're like, I'm going to hire Eric Darling as a consultant someday. Um, I'm pretty good at all these things. In fact, Beer Gut Magazine says that I am the best in the world at all these things. So uh, if, you, if you need help with a SQL server that is giving you problems, uh, uh, you should stop talking to other people because they're a waste of your time. Uh, if you need some very high quality, very low cost training, uh, you can get 24 hours of my SQL server performance tuning training for about 150 USD. Uh, you can go to the link up there and you can put in the discount code over there, or you can click on the link in the video description and find the same thing all in one place. It's amazing the way technology works, isn't it? Uh, again, upcoming events, nothing for the rest of this year, maybe next year. Uh, if there's an event that you care about and you want me to come to, let me know what it is. I'm not psychic. I'm not, and I'm not constantly just out in the world looking for events to go to. I am very selective in, 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 in what I apply to. So if there's something good that I don't know about, well, gosh darn it, let me know. And with all that out of the way, let's let's talk about some of these, these no-locking problems. So uh, the first demo that I'm going to show you is Paul White's demo. Um, we're going to create a simple table. It's got no indexes. It just has one column in it. It doesn't have to look like this in order for you to hit this problem. This is just a very easy and convenient way to do it. Uh, in the first session, we are going to have this query running. And gosh, this is a very, very uh, clever query. Because not only are we setting the transaction isolation level to read uncommitted up here, but despite of that, we are starting a transaction with a name, a name transaction. It's amazing. And then, well, this, <laughs> I don't know, perhaps slightly less clever one equals one loop runs. Uh, over in this window, we are going to do this. And we are going to say, while a transaction with this name exists, do this and insert some data and delete some data. All right. So pretty simple stuff there. Okay. So we're going to come back over here and we're going to start this loop off. 
And this thing is just going to run and do a thing and assign a thing to a variable. And then as, the, as that's running, uh, we're going to run this portion of the code. And I want you to keep an eye on the window, on the tab right next to this one that says executing, because it's going to stop executing real quick. As soon as I do that, right? That was a very, very quick cutoff. And of course, over here, we have this lovely message. Could not continue scan with no lock due to data movement. Um, again, very simple but effective demo. This doesn't, this isn't exactly what has to happen in order for you to have problems with no lock queries hitting these errors. It's just a good example of how you can actually hit it. It's bad. It's not good for you. It's painful. Good luck figuring this out, just looking at the error log. All right, demo number two, Aaron Bertrand, great fella, uh, rum rumor, rumored to be Canadian, but we'll, we'll let that slide. And uh, this comes from a blog post that Aaron wrote. Um, I, I should have the link for it somewhere. Um, if not, just look for Aaron Bertrand, no lock. Not only will you find this post, you'll find lots of other great posts about no lock. Uh, so in this, in this query, uh, Aaron also has a loop that runs and does stuff, right? It's this thing. And uh, he also has an update that runs and it just says go a hundred times. So uh, I'm gonna kick this off because this runs for a bit longer than the other thing does. And if we run this, uh, we'll see double counted rows eight, skipped rows seven, right? Already we have hit problems and we can keep running this until that go sort of um, exhaust itself. It does go a hundred times. This time we have one double counted row and seven skipped rows. Then we can essentially just keep doing this. And now we have, uh oh, two double counted rows and seven skipped rows. So this just gets more and more interesting the more you do it. Um, I guess seven and eight is a pretty common scenario for this thing having problems. Seven and eight just doing its thing. Oh boy, this one, this one looks a little bit different too. So this one we skipped a bunch of rows and then uh, wow, we skipped a lot of rows and then ended up double counting some rows. So you can see that no lock, I mean, you know, aside from the demo that I showed you in my isolation level series where uh, there was an update, and one of the tables referenced in the update had a no lock hint, and we ended up putting bad data into a table. No lock hints can, of course, cause all sorts of problems just for your regular select queries, uh, whether it's errors because uh, you, you no lock cannot continue scan due to data movement, never a good time, or you just start returning incorrect results of things because you are no locking and seeing all sorts of things happening, flying like monkeys all around your query. It's not a good time. All right. So uh, as always, stay safe out there. Um, don't use no lock hints. Please, please use optimistic isolation levels. Um, do not harbor under the uh, misgivings of others that optimistic isolation levels cause dirty reads and other unfortunate things because that's just not true. Uh, they prevent these problems. They prevent lots of other problems. They prevent locking and blocking and deadlocking problems. <laughs> They're really wonderful. You should, you should try them out sometime. Anyway, uh, just a quick video today. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I hope you learned something. And, uh, well, I don't know, depending on uh, when this video publishes, uh, I hope you have a great day and or weekend uh, and or life. Um, may our roads someday cross again. All right. Goodbye.